any woman does it is beyond comprehension, giggling Harry reveals his delight at birth of amazing 7 pounds 3 ounces son as he praises incredible Meghan and says they're still thinking about a name. Prince Harry revealed his delight at the royal baby's arrival during a TV statement on Monday in which he heaped praise on his incredible wife. The Duke of Sussex announced that Meghan had given birth at 5.26m to a boy weighing 7 pounds 3 ounces, having been more than a week overdue. Prince Harry gushed that the little thing is absolutely to die for as he announced the news on Monday after Meghan went into labour in the early hours of this morning. Speaking from Windsor, a visibly excited Prince Harry shared his immense pride as he joked of getting just two hours sleep last night, before calling the birth the most amazing experience I could ever have possibly imagined. In a statement shortly after the birth was announced, Buckingham Palace said Meghan and her baby were both doing well, and that the Queen and other members of the royal family were delighted with the news. Meghan is now recovering at Frogmore Cottage, the couple's home set within the grounds of Windsor Castle with attentions now turning to the baby's name, which Harry referred to the next bit of his newfound parenthood. Revealing that he was incredibly proud of his wife, an overjoyed Prince Harry said, Mother and baby are doing incredibly well. It's been amazing, so we just wanted to share this with everybody. How any woman does what they do is beyond comprehension, but we're both absolutely thrilled and so grateful to all the love and support from everybody out there. Asked if they had any names yet, he said, still thinking about names. The baby is a little bit overdue, so we've had a little bit of time to think about it. That's the next bit, but for us I think we will be seeing you guys in probably two days time as planned as a family to be able to share it with you guys and so everyone can see the baby. Asked what it was like to be present for the birth, he laughed and said, I haven't been at many births. This is definitely my first birth. It was amazing, absolutely incredible, and, as I said, I'm so incredibly proud of my wife. As every father and parent will ever say, you know, your baby is absolutely amazing, but this little thing is absolutely to die for, so I'm just over the moon. It also revealed the Duchess mother Doria Ragland is currently by her daughter's side at Frogmore Cottage, suggesting that Meghan had undergone a home birth. A formal announcement released by Buckingham Palace included a long list of members of the royal family who were delighted at the news of the birth, including the Queen and Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and Camilla, and William and Kate. The announcement also named Kecht Meghan's mother Doria, who was said to be overjoyed, but her father Thomas was conspicuously absent from those named. It is currently unknown if the Duke or Duchess have spoken to Meghan's father Thomas Markle Sr. since the birth, after she seemingly cut ties with the 74-year-old following a series of public embarrassments last year. From his home in New Mexico, Thomas Markle Sr. expressed his pride at the birth of his daughter's first child after he was snubbed from the official royal announcement. In a statement the former Hollywood lighting director, 74, said God bless this child and that he hoped his grandchild will serve with grace, dignity and honor. He fell out of favor with the royal family when he staged a paid paparazzi shoot ahead of the royal wedding. He then pulled out of the wedding due to poor health, leaving Meghan to walk up the aisle by herself. In an interview shortly afterwards amid reports of a widening rift he suggested it might be easier for his daughter if he was dead. The baby's sex announced at around half-past three this afternoon, was a surprise for the Duke and Duchess, who had chosen not to find out what they are having until after the birth. Harry and Meghan's son is now the seventh in line to the throne, behind his father Prince Harry in the line of succession and bumping his uncle, the Duke of York, further down the line into eighth place. But the child will not be given the title of Prince and he will instead be known as the Earl of Dumbarton. The baby boy is expected to take the surname Sussex for school or nursery in the same way as William and Kate's children, George, Charlotte, and Louis, taking Cambridge. Prince Harry was forced to cancel part of a planned trip to the Netherlands this week amid rumors that Meghan's first baby was due as long ago as last weekend. Harry is still expected to carry out an engagement at The Hague on May 9 to launch the one-year countdown to the Invictus Games his Paralympic-style event for injured service personnel.
a visit to Amsterdam the previous day was cancelled for logistical planning purposes, with the palace announcing he would postpone the trip. It is understood that the Netherlands visit had been pencilled in since last year but aides had not announced it due to the potential clash with the birth. Sources have said Harry is desperately keen to attend the Invictus launch. Meghan has her mother, Doria Ragland, staying with them at Frogmore House in Windsor, so will be in good hands if he does fly out. Meghan and Harry are said have been making plans to embark on a three-year assignment which will see them travel to Africa to take part in charity work, promoting Britain and projects involving the Commonwealth. Political leaders and famous names from across the country were quick to share their well wishes with the couple this afternoon. Prime Minister Theresa May tweeted, Congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the arrival of their baby boy. Wishing you all the best at this happy time. The Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby tweeted his congratulations to the new parents. Mr. Welby, who married the couple in May last year, said, Congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the birth of their baby boy. May God bless the new family with love, health and happiness. In an Instagram post, the Duke of York said, Congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the safe delivery of your baby boy. Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davidson tweeted about Harry's announcement, he can barely keep the grin off his face. Lovely stuff. Congratulations to the whole family on their new arrival. Former Prime Minister David Cameron tweeted, heartfelt congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the arrival of their baby boy. Such wonderful and happy news. Sending love and very best wishes. Home Secretary Sajid Javid make a joke in his tweet of congratulations to the royal couple. Mr. Javid tweeted, congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the birth of their boy. Absolutely wonderful news. Hashtag Roy Albaby. Jokingly referring to an outdated tradition which saw the Home Secretary attend a royal birth, he wrote, as Home Secretary, contrary to speculation, I didn't attend the birth. The couple announced the pregnancy to family and friends at the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank at Windsor Castle in October last year. They had previously said they would be keeping the arrival of the baby private and had announced they would not be undertaking the royal tradition of a Lindo wing appearance, where both Princess Diana and Kate Middleton had shown off their new arrivals to the watching world. Photos of the baby are set to be released in the following days but they will forego the tradition of greeting members of the public, as have other members of the royal household. The couple are also rumored to be breaking royal tradition when the baby arrives and will not be hiring the favored Norland nannies and instead have enlisted the help of an agency in Kensington to assist them with finding a nanny, with Meghan having reportedly asked that the nanny be from the U.S. Meghan's hunt for an American nanny shows that her heart is still very much in her homeland of the U.S. The 37-year-old is said to have enlisted the help of staff at a recruitment agency, who have been told to find a candidate to start within the next three months. Speaking to the Mirror last month, a source said that the modern royal couple have clear ideas on how they will be bringing up their child. They said, Meghan was clear in telling recruiters she favors an American over a Brit and wants them to feel part of the family rather than a uniformed member of staff. That is important to her. She's never hidden the fact she is fiercely proud of her American roots. They are keen to explore the possibility of a male nanny. The worker will earn up to £70,000 a year, depending on experience. Apostrophe. The candidate will be interviewed by the royal couple and if successful, will be based at their newly renovated Frogmore Cottage, as well as having the use of a car. The recruitment agency, based in Kensington, West London, is said to specialize in providing bilingual children minders as well as favored Norland nannies. Kate and Williams are known to have hired a graduate of the Bath College of Norland nannies, Spaniard Maria Teresa Barallo. Norland nannies dress in brown pinafore dress with a white shirt and brown hat with an N. Only a handful of men are known to have attended the infamous Norland school, with the first two having graduated just last year. Meghan is said to be keen on keeping her U.S. heritage and the new baby could be eligible for joint U.K. and U.S. citizenship. A child born outside the U.S. and in wedlock to a U.S. citizen parent and a non-U.S. citizen parent, 
as in the case of Meghan and Harry, may acquire U.S. citizenship at birth if the U.S. parent lived in America for five years. However, whatever citizenship the child has, it will be raised in luxury with the couple having spent a fair amount renovating Frogmore Cottage to their tastes. The couple had carried out extensive work to the property which meant workers had been present at the estate up until just weeks ago. During their engagement, they had been living at Nottingham Cottage in the grounds of Kensington Palace, with their neighbors being Harry's brother William, and sister-in-law Kate. Meghan and Harry left Kensington Palace and moved into Frogmore Cottage earlier this month, separating their royal household from the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. In recent months, rumors have swirled about a royal rift between the two brothers and their spouses. There were claims that Kate broke down in tears following Princess Charlotte's bridesmaid's dress fitting, ahead of Meghan and Harry's wedding in May, as well as suggestions the pair had clashed over staff. However, royal insiders have insisted that there has been no falling out between the Cambridges and the Sussexes, but admitted the pair are very different people. The new royal baby will benefit from the succession of the Crown Act which was amended in April last year. Princess Charlotte had been the first royal heir to benefit from the amendment. Prior to the changed, Louis would have bumped Charlotte down a list of succession, taking her place. The new act, which does not take into account the gender of the heir, will mean that Harry and Meghan's baby will be in with a shot of the throne. The basis for succession had been previously determined in the constitutional developments of the 17th century which was culminated in the Bill of Rights in 1689 and the Act of Settlement in 1701. In 1688 when James II fled the country, Parliament ruled that he had abdicated the government and that the throne was vacant. Following this the throne was offered to his daughter Mary and her husband William of Orange, and not his young son. The royal website states, the succession to the Crown Act, 2013, amended the provisions of the Bill of Rights and the Act of Settlement to end the system of male primogeniture, under which a younger son can displace an elder daughter in the line of succession. The Act applies to those born after October 28, 2011. The Act also ended the provisions by which those who marry Roman Catholics are disqualified from the line of succession. The changes came into force in all 16 rounds in March 2015. During her pregnancy, Meghan has not let Bump get in the way of royal engagements and has continued to travel the world with Prince Harry, as well as attending various events in the UK. The couple's first royal tour was in October 2018, and they announced the pregnancy on the first day. They spent over two weeks travelling around Australia, Fiji. New Zealand and Tonga and in the time managed to fit in an impressive 76 engagements. But despite the bumper-packed first year of being the royal, it's rumored that Meghan's maternity leave might not be all that relaxing. They recently gave the public a unique glimpse into their 2017 trip, sharing stunning never-before-seen photos on their new Instagram account. One of the moving shots shows the royal couple tending to a large bull elephant in the bush equipping him with a satellite collar. Their royal highnesses were assisting Dr. Mark Chase of Elephants Without Borders, who is working to protect elephant populations by tracking their movements. Harry was rumored to have proposed in Botswana, and Meghan's engagement ring includes a center diamond from Botswana, which is cushioned by two smaller diamonds from Princess Diana's collection. On Meghan's first ever wildlife safari, the couple watched the sunset behind a spectacular vista of acacia thorn trees and green-backed herons fishing in the river. Prince Harry also spent a gap year in Lesotho back in 2004. He once described it as his second home. A spokesman for the royal family didn't deny the reports and said, any future plans for the Duke and Duchess are speculative at this stage. No decisions have been taken about future roles. The Duke will continue to fulfill his role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's new son will not be titled his or her Royal Highness, HRH, unless the Queen intervenes. Harry and Meghan's baby boy is not officially a royal, despite being seventh in line to the throne, after George V limited titles within the family during the First World War. HRH status normally lapses after two royal generations except for the eldest son of the eldest son of the eldest son of the monarch, which is Prince George. 
The chief executive of the Invictus Games said Harry will be a terrific father as he congratulated the Duke on the newborn on Monday. Mr. Reed said everyone involved in the Games, created by Harry for wounded and sick service personnel, is delighted to hear of the baby boy's birth. He said Harry's natural and relaxed style will likely come into play as he embarks on the adventure of fatherhood. Mr. Reed told the BBC, I think he will be terrific, he's got an incredible way with people, entirely natural, unforced, whether that's with the military guys whether it's the wounded. I mean everybody I've seen him come into contact with he's very relaxed, very natural, very charming and he's got a great sense of fun too. I think he's going to be a terrific father.